What's up amigos? So today we're looking at fastbacks for automotive aerodynamics. So we're gonna be going through what is a fastback, effects on aerodynamics and effects on drag. This last point, there are two subtle points that should be made about this that feed into each other. So first of all, what is a fastback for a car? So here I have a, a pretty cool drawing, if I do say so myself, <laughs> of a car. And the fastback is this point here. So you can see how it comes down in a quite nice sweeping motion. It's There aren't really too many jagged edges or sharp edges. That's a fast back. And the reason why a fast back is um, quite important and quite popular is because it's effects on aerodynamics. So what does it do? So a typical car and pretty much most uh, passenger cars have a few windows and each window is separated by different plastic and metal components. So this is called an A pillar here. This pillar here is called a B pillar. And then we have a C pillar at the back. And then you have the back window here. This C pillar is very important because how much you, um, the flow comes from, from around here and it separates and it makes a vortex on one side. And on the other side, there is another vortex. This happens on fast backs and it's very important because the air now that's coming over reaches this vortex and the vortex now pushes the air down and keeps it attached over the back window and the back of the car. What this does is the drag coefficient now drops and this makes the car very aerodynamic. However, there are some more important points that we should be making. First of all, what is the effect of the angle between the car roof and the fast back alpha here? So we have a simplified version, the fast back here, and we have this angle here what is the effect of this angle on drag? So let's say we have first up just a regular flat roof and then it goes into like a square back. So most cars are not like this, but let's say this is the extreme version. So in this particular case, there is a huge separation zone around here and this creates a lot of drag. So drag is very, very high. <clears throat> let's say we start reducing this angle. So now it's more like this. And let's say it's at about 35 degrees or so. The drag is now significantly lower, but there are no vortices present yet because the vortices need to be a little, this angle needs to be a little bit shallower before the vortices can be present. So once we start getting to about 30 degrees, these vortices will start to now form and they'll keep forming until we go down to completely flat again. And then we again approximate this square back because you have to have a back to a car. So this angle now, which is between this surface and this surface is zero degrees because they're exactly mating uh, perfectly. And then you'll get a lot of separation again. So there's a sweet zone where the fast back is actually very aerodynamic. Let's draw a graph here to explain what happens to sum this up. So if we have the angle of attack here or the slope angle, and we have 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, and we have the drag coefficient on the y-axis, and this goes to 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and let's go to 0 0.4 up here. When we have a zero degree angle of attack, the, the drag coefficient might be about here. Then when we start reducing it, it will start to reduce as well. And then it'll start to go back up a little bit. And then once we get to 30 degrees, we're at the maximum here. So let's draw a line like this. And then, as I mentioned here, the vortices are no longer present at about 35 degrees. I should mention that this is based on how sharp this angle, this roof is as well. If this is quite curved, then this will affect how um, well the vortices form as well. But let's assume that this roof is just a nice square edge there. If we push it above 30 degrees and we go to 40 degrees now, the drag will drop all of a sudden and then just start to stay constant. So that's how the fastback affects aerodynamics with vortices and how it affects the drag coefficient. But there's one more important point that we should make about the drag in total. So if you've looked at the video of aerodynamic drag on our aero fundamentals video on YouTube, you will know that the drag coefficient equals the drag divided by half rho v squared times the reference area. So you can see that the drag is not just a function of the drag coefficient, but also these terms here. So this goes to drag equals half rho v squared s cd. 
So if the drag coefficient drops, that's great, the drag will drop as well, but the fastback also has another very beneficial uh, effect on the on drag potentially. And this is by reducing the frontal area if you design it properly. So you could get a double reduction in drag simply by having the uh, drag coefficient dropping, but also the frontal area dropping as well, which would then make the drag drop quite a lot. Now, this is if you design the frontal area properly, which again may or may not occur, and the drag coefficient may or may not be reduced depending on where you are in this graph here. So that is a fastback. Let's recap now what we just went through. So what is a fastback? It's a type of back to a car. So top, typically cars, regular sedans, I should say, have a fairly square um, edge. So they look more like this, and you have the backlight. The, the back window, I should say. They're both the same thing. Backlight is a technical term. And, but with fastbacks, you now have a very gentle slope coming down. And this reduces the drag coefficient by creating these vortices, which help the flow suck down to the back of the car, keep it attached, which means that this, there's not much separation, which means there's not a big wake. And this reduces the drag coefficient of the car. If you push this angle too far, then you start coming up here and the amount of energy that the vortices are using, so this wasted energy effectively, is too great for this flow separation that you're preventing to compensate for. So having the flow attached is not as efficient as just letting these vortices pop. So this is what happens here. If we let these vortices pop by increasing the angle of attack even more, or the, the um, slope angle more, then we actually get a reduction in drag because Okay, the flow is still separating around the back, but we don't have these vortices that are just sucking up all this energy. So we can reduce the drag a little bit more. Now, finally, the drag can also be reduced based on if we can reduce the frontal area as well. So that's the end of this video. Make sure to like, subscribe. And if you want to get better at uh, CFD yourself and or theory, check out our courses in the link description. And also, if you want to look at more aerodynamics of cars, we have other videos, but also there's one book which I really like. It's a textbook called Automotive Aerodynamics by Joseph Katz. And the reason why I like that is it goes through a lot of basic concepts very nicely. You can find a link in the description for that. And I'll see you in the next uh, video. Peace out, amigos.